What is going on guys? So today, we will be turning this into this. So I just finished editing this video and I wanted to give a few more tips with it. So here we go. Um, first things first, what you'll need to install the Warthog Low Center of Gravity Belly Dragger Kit is first, of course, your stock SCX24, um, the included extra hardware that comes in that kit, and then also three pivot balls to forelink that front suspension. I've linked in the description below the Axial part number where you can get those, or just search eBay or Amazon for SCX24 pivot balls. Some people sell them standalone. Also, you will need a longer screw or bolt for the SCX24 because you will need an extra one when forelinking that front end as well. Personally, I get mine from the brass differential covers. They always come with stainless steel hardware. One of those stock bolts that goes in there will work for you there. A uh, quick note as well, when trimming the drive shaft, I actually found out later that the sharp razor blade, although it does work, it's a little dangerous, so be very careful if you're using that method. Otherwise, get yourself some little side cutters or clippers to clip the, that drive shaft when you install it and shorten the length. Um, anyways, it's a long video, it's detailed, I go through the entire process, so sit back, hope you enjoy, maybe build your belly dragger along with me. If you got any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks. Okay, so as you saw, today we're turning the stock SCX24 JL or C10 into one of the Warthog low center of gravity um, crawlers that I designed in uh, 3D print. So hang out here, take a look. If you're curious about how these install, I will go ahead and show you. So let's dive right into it. This is a bone stock JL. I actually purchased it today from the hobby store. Um, what else you'll need is the included package of goodies and spare parts right here. So we'll get into that later. But first things first, we're going to pull that body clip off pull this body up and start diving into removing the parts. So um, tool wise, we have a 1.3 millimeter driver. I strongly recommend picking up one of these. Um, I don't know if it's how they're designed or what the case may be, but you almost never strip screws with these and they just function great. I got a needle nose to help us out, a little wheel wrench. Uh, we'll need something sharp like a razor blade and then we'll need an extra pivot ball for the new link. So let's dive right in here. We're gonna start by taking out these four bottom most screws on both sides of the chassis here. So let's get that rolling. Let me make sure you're in focus here. And retain these because we will be using these with the new chassis as well. So keep them in order, keep them organized. You're gonna want that. Um, if you do happen to lose track of them, long ones go on the two outside edges, the short ones go on the two inside marks. So let's get that rolling. And again, I think you can just work on these things so much faster if you do have one of these little drivers. They just work great. So we've got the left side off here. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the right side. Get that body out of the way. Some people may find it easier to work on without the bodies, but it does not really bother me. So um, I'll just leave mine on for this. Uh, the two outside ones, they are long because they captivate a couple of the suspension links. So just back them off, uh, you know, a few threads and then they'll kind of sit there. But if you just grab them, you can then pull them out. So, all right, get the two center ones out. Drop that one. We'll have to grab that. Let's see if I can shake it free, but it's probably stuck to the motor. And then this one here. There it goes, fell out of there. Okay, now, next step, you're gonna go ahead and remove the shocks from their mounts on the chassis. The great thing about these trucks too is they the whole entire truck uses the same size hardware. Um, for those of you who have uh, experience with other RCs, that isn't always the case, so that's really convenient on these. The only bolts, I believe, on this whole setup that aren't the same size are the ones that hold the motor into the mount, so. Um, definitely a nice feature of the SCX24 here. So we've got those two suspension or suspension shocks off, and we'll remove these two as well. And these trucks are really easy and quick to strip down, which is another nice feature of them. Okay. So we've got those out and that out. Now you'll need to unplug your steering servo from the ESC. And then pull the frame rails slightly apart and that whole unit will drop out. The one thing I forgot is you'll also have to unplug the motor from the speed controller there, the ESC. And now you can see we have these two separate components. So 
first things first is we are going to need to stretch the front end of this so let's get into that i will show you how that is done it's pretty straightforward don't worry about it but to start we are going to take these bottom links off this is the front of the vehicle right the front has the servo so we're going to take these two screws out of the bottom of the front of the transmission transmission skid plate assembly whatever you may call it these are also long bolts, same length as the two outer ones we just uninstalled from the chassis. Same thing with the other one. And the whole front end of the, uh, of the truck will now separate. So let's get that separated. All right, now that we have this, what you're basically doing is you're going to take these two previous bottom suspension arms and we are going to move those to the top and also four link this. So let's go ahead and remove the stock um, y link here up front we'll be getting rid of that sorry I'll try to keep you guys in frame here oh, didn't back it off enough this one you'll have to back all the way out because I believe both sides of this are threaded so you gotta just back it all the way out okay pull this out of the way now we're gonna take our wheel nut wrench and remove the wheels so we can get at the rest of the mounts. I'll start with this side here. Okay, wheels off. And now what we're going to do is take these bottom links out of these holes here. These screws are the same way. Just back them off a little bit. Get your fingers in there and pull the bolt out. So get that one off. Same thing to the other side. All right, get that off, get that wheel off, get the shock out of the way, and remove this bolt. Okay, bolt's out of the way. So now we basically have a bare front axle. Um, what we're going to do here next is take these links we just removed from these bottom housings and we're going to put them both up right next to this right next to this servo. So they were here, we're going to move them up to here. So grab the hardware that came out of either the top one or one of the bottom ones. I like to get it started in the link itself first. And then we get that lined up with the outside hole and as you can see here, I'm just going to thread that in and uh, you don't want to make it too tight because now you're directly on that pivot ball, but looks like we're doing pretty good there. Grab the other link that was on the bottom and grab one of the longer bolts. And we're going to put it in the other side, same exact way. I'll even get that nice and close so you guys can see it. Alrighty, and you can leave these a little looser if you want to break them in and get some more flux out of it. So that's step one. Now step two is where the stock parts come into play. This is the stock extra parts package that comes with the 24. So if you bought one of those, you should have this. We're going to open this up. Grab these out of here. This is what we need. And open this up. Get these parts out here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take these and you're going to match them up to the stock bottom ones. So we're going to find the right length here. That's the one right there. It's uh, actually, I believe, 61.5 millimeters long. And then I'll match this one up. So those are the two links we're looking for. So these are going to replace the bottoms on the front. Now we will need the pillow balls and that is what does not come with the kit and does not come with the truck. So this is what you're going to need to do. Take your stock Y-Link. And I normally just use my, my, my nut or my bit driver here. Put it in that hole, kind of go in a circle motion and push. And as you can see, that has popped out of there. So that's one of them that we'll need. Um, get that out of there. Then what I'll do is I'll put that back onto the, the little, uh, uh, let's see, the little Allen driver here. And then we're going to take this. Oops, I'm dropping links. Let me pick that up. So we're going to take that and now we're just going to line it up and work it and you'll hear it click in. So that's how you install those. Now 
what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my extra pillow balls here. You can get them from the kit, which is linked in the description below. Um, I personally found these on eBay, and they seem to work all right. They take a little more to break in, and you got to trim them a little bit sometimes, but, you know, they're not bad. So let's get three of those out. What I'm going to do here is same thing. Put it on the end of my, uh, my Allen driver here. Grab my new link, push it in, and pop. There it goes, snaps in. And do the same thing for the second link here. So do that nice and quick for you here. Boom. Pop that in. And um, guys, you don't necessarily need to use the, the pivot ball links. I think it works best if you do. Um, but a lot of people use Teflon too. Whatever you can fit in there to close that gap and still give you the flex you want. So those are installed. Now what we'll do is we will take one of the long little bolts that we have here. And we are going to run that through here. So get it started in that housing. And now all we're doing is reversing what we just did with those stock bottom links and reinstalling them. So get that lined up. This is the reason you have to remove the wheels too, is just to get these in place. So get that nice and snug. And again, with any of these bolts, guys, they are going into plastic, so you don't got to go crazy on them. Um, they don't need that much. Okay, guys, so actually what you'll need is you're just going to need another long bolt that is not included with the Jeep or with this kit here. So in addition to those three pivot balls you need, you're also going to need one of these longer little bolts here. Um, where you can get these, uh, if, you're, if you're modifying one of these to this extent, the you can use one of the differential um differential cover bolts or anything like that really they will work for this application um, so what i'm doing is i'm taking one of the differential cover bolts from one of my kits uh, that i had laying around here and i'm going to use one of those so it's not the extra long one but the medium long one um, otherwise i'm sure you can source these elsewhere but every diff kit that i've bought the ones that uh, the brass diff covers come in come with their own hardware so you can use some of the stock hardware from that if you want or wherever you may be able to find one of these longer bolts here so we're going to drive that in here alrighty and now we are all set so what we have done is we have taken the stock lower um, suspension arms and we have taken those from the bottom brackets and we moved them up to the top and then we've taken the two included longer suspension arms and move those to the bottom so let's go ahead and dive into our next step here so the next step is going to include this extra long drive shaft here um, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be trimming this to fit in place of this one here after we install it so before we install that front end back on let's go ahead and remove the stock drive shaft here There we go, got it. Now, take this off. We're gonna need to remove the stock shaft that's in place there. I just popped that out by spreading them. And you'll see there's little ears on here. You're just gonna wanna line up one ear on this side. And don't be afraid, guys, these are pretty tough. Just push it out of the way. Make sure it gets into that hole there. but it is certainly a little task to get these in, a little finicky. So get that lined up. And then you heard it click in there and now we're locked and loaded there. So um, let me grab that short screw again. We'll get that ready to go in after we take this and put this on here. Now guys, take your time with this next step. When you're trimming this extra drive shaft piece that comes with the kit, um, you're going to want to be careful there and make sure that you do that adequately. Okay, and what we're going to do here is actually take the rear off and swap it with the front one that we just created. Okay, 
I haven't done this method before, but after just thinking through it in my head, I think this will work a little bit better. So, take the rear stock drive shaft and install it in the front. And then, take that additional one that came with the kit and install it in the rear. Okay, now that that's installed, you can take a look here at our clearances, and this we will have to certainly shorten. So I'm going to start off right away. Um, you can leave it installed on the truck. Again, guys, be very careful in this step. Take your time, find the right lengths, and I'm just going to trim off a couple, of, eh, probably about a eh, quarter inch here. And the best way to do this is with a nice, sharp knife. Mine could be a little sharper, but it ought to work. And you need a clean cut, so try not to heat it or anything like that, because if you do that, the ends, you'll have to clean them up. Um, how straight the end of the cut is, again, doesn't really matter, but you want to take your time and make sure you get the right length. Okay, and it looks like I'm still going to need this a little bit shorter. The way I'm telling that is by taking this top link and seeing if it will make it into its home there. So we still need that a little bit shorter. So let's take that back out. And I will tune you guys back in as soon as I have that done here. One thing you guys may also have to do in this process is also trim the male end as well and just shorten that up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and trim mine as well because what's happening currently is it is currently bottoming out in there. You see how that outside shaft isn't all the way around, but the male is not. Let's see if we can get that to focus here. So as you can see, is that bottom shaft is um, not all the way down, but it's hitting the end of the inside. So I'm just going to take a little bit off the ed end of this. Okay. Now I'll pop that back into place here and let's see where we're at. All right, and that's appears like it's going to be good. We're right there. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Okay, let's take a look here and that ought to be good. So now let's get the front end installed. So we've got our front end here and we are going to take our bottom most links and put them up into the slots that we previously took them out of. Take one of our long screws, slide it into that bottom hole on the skid plate there. Make sure it goes through the link. And then once it goes through, just get it nice and snug in there, and you'll be all set on that side. Now, do the same thing on the other side. Just slide that link in there, grab one of your long little bolts here, and find the hole. Okay, there it is, and just work that in, get it nice and snug. Alright, so now we're going to check our clearances on the front, just like we did for the rear. I think we will be all set. 
just at this configuration here. It is looking pretty good. Yep, so that you can just leave as it is. So just have to trim the rear there. So now we're gonna go ahead and get this installed into the chassis. So I'll take the Warthog chassis. Now well, we're gonna open up this top hatch here. Slide that wire through and all these other goodies and just work the side tabs around it. Now we're gonna take a look at the bottom. And there are two holes for those bottom two pegs to go into. And if I just squeeze, now it's right in the spot that it needs to be. So I'm gonna take our stock hardware that we took out of there. Start with the short ones in the middle because those are gonna be a little easier to get through and in. Uh, you're gonna pick the outside of the two holes. And due to the 3D printing, there might be a little debris in the way, but if you just line that up and start screwing it through, it will go right in. Uh, again, with these, just get them nice and snug. They don't need to be tight. There's not a lot of force on these, and I don't want you guys stripping out your, uh, your transmissions or anything like that. So again, find the hole, start screwing it. It'll make its way through. Once it gets up to that edge there, just get it nice and snug. All righty, so got that side all buttoned up and I always look at the bottom and see if I can see any visible gap there and I can't so we know that side is good. Now find my other short screw out of the transmission and we're going to take that, send it into this side here. See how it's a little wobbly at first, that's just breaking through that outer layer of the 3D print. And I can feel that getting snug, so I'm going to leave it there. And here's our other screw. Take that. Get that started. And screw that in until it is nice and snug. Nice and snug. There we go. Okay, so now what we need to do is take our upper links and get them relatively lined up. This is a little bit easier to understand when you are doing it, so if you're worried about this part of the process, don't worry too much. Um, what I'm going to do is line up the drive shaft first. The one thing I always make the mistake is I never li line the drive shaft up soon enough. So I line that drive shaft up, I got that in place, and now I'm going to take those upper links and slide them into their homes here. They go on the right. Uh, you should do one at a time and grab your long bolt. Get it all ready on your, uh, on your hex driver there. Go to the outermost holes in the chassis. Just gonna have to start and work it through that hole here. Make sure I'm lined up. Looks like I left a little piece of the support material there, so I'll just clean that up a little bit. And grab my bolt again. And then now, I'll start going right in there. And it looks like we should be pretty closely lined up. So I'm just gonna keep going through. And once that starts moving through, yep, I can see we're deep enough, we're definitely lined up. I'm just going to screw that in. Again, not too tight, just nice and snug. These are little bolts and little threads, so we don't wanna strip them. And now I will take the other one for the other side here and repeat that process. So we're gonna repeat that process four times for both the rears and the fronts. Oops, pop that one out of the way there. and snug and then moving on to the front so first things first make sure you connect that drive shaft straight away there we go drive shaft is connected take the front links here 
Drop that down in place. Grab one of our long bolts previously taken out. Just open up that hole a little bit. Yeah, the reason that these, these holes are tight, guys, is so the, the bolts thread into them, and that can make it a little difficult to get them started, but with a little pressure, the bolts will go right through. That's just that first layer where the support material was during the print. So now, get that lined up, and start pushing that through. And there we go. It's going right in for us. Sometimes you get it to go on the other side. You might have to play with the link a little bit, move it in a direction, but normally they'll go straight through. Um, it's just a finicky little act, and uh, the best way to uh, to get these installed is to just play with it and, and work on it. Maybe a little frustrating, but this is probably uh, the hardest part of the whole install, and it's not not very bad at all. So. I can see the threads coming through and I missed that one so just got to play with it a little bit guys take your time don't get frustrated just get it lined up and send it on home okay now we're one step further here so now what we will do is take our shocks. Um, personally, I removed the springs uh, to make it a belly dragger, guys. Just functions way better. But take our shocks, go to this forwardmost hole. And these, like, same thing, you'll have to put a little pressure into them when you're first starting it, and then they'll, the bolts will grab. Um, the reason it's like that, again, is so it's a, it's a good tight connection. With these, just get them snug, don't go too far. And I'm going to do the same thing with this side. Get that suspension to the front hole and install that. Keep an eye on it. Watch it go through. Just snug it up, nothing crazy. And now the rear is the same thing. So, I'm going to get this started here. And that one's in. And same thing with this side here. Alrighty guys, sorry for that little intermission there, just got a phone call. So. We're going to get that last shock installed here. Excellent. So now what you can do is you can replace your two front wheels. So let's get those installed. I'm sure no one needs, uh, needs too much advice on this part of the process. Installing it backwards. And again, with the front wheel nuts, guys, a little trick. You do not want to get these overly tight. It will start binding up your front axle, and you'll see a little... Uh, a little bit of issues with that, so don't do that.
That may just be with the aftermarket brass, though. I'm not sure. So, we'll get that front wheel on there. Okay. Excellent. So now, what I'll do is I'm going to take this little servo lead and push it through this small little gap here. So it comes out right there. And you can see, you'll know if you've done it correctly because the servo will fully seat inside that front housing there. The Emax servos fit as well. I'm actually going to loosen these up a little bit because they're feeling a little tight. But again, this is a brand new truck and also every vehicle kind of needs to break itself in when you're switching out chassis and things like that too. So I'm just going to loosen those up. So if you're having any binding issues with your shocks, just loosen them slightly. Um, you'll be all set then. So now what we're going to take is unplug the lights from the stock ESC. And now what you're going to want to do is just kind of lift from a corner. This is adhesived down to the stock mount and we're going to go ahead and reuse this. So just peel up from that chassis and the adhesive should stay on it. With all the servo ports facing forward, we're going to install that on the ESC plate here. What I like to do is, so it can be as low as possible, is just push it back up against the transmission plate there. And again, be wary of where the switch is, so I'm going to make sure it's out of the way a little bit. And then just put a little pressure on that, that adhesive will work just fine again. So once that's in place, take your servo wire and put it right back on that steering uh, channel. And then, all we need to do is plug in our motor wire, like so, and grab our battery out of the, uh, the stock housing. I also use the Velcro strap from the stock housing too. So we're going to take that out. You just pull from the bottom and then pull out the side. And what we'll do is we will take that and run it through the side here. There's these little cutouts in the chassis for the stock battery Velcro to go through, just like so. I just get it started like that because personally, the best way to mount these battery wires, or I'm sorry, these batteries on the Warthog chassis is below that plate actually. It lowers the center of gravity just a little bit more and makes it about as low as it can be. So you lift up the back, slide the wires through first, and this can be a little finicky. Makes battery swaps a little more difficult, but hey, this is all about performance. So that's what we're gonna do. Use your screwdriver, whatever you got handy to, uh, to pull that battery lead through. Okay, balance lead. Let that rest wherever it likes to, just make sure it's not in the way. And now that the battery's in place, we'll go ahead and take our battery strap and pull that tight. Just like so. Alrighty. Make sure that's mounted where it needs to be. We'll take the battery and plug it in. The battery lead is just long enough to do this, so position it just where you need to to get that in. Take your antenna wire, tuck it away, close that top hatch, and you have yourself a functioning built warthog. Guys, if you have any more questions about this, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what your thoughts are. But uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. Install is not too bad. It increases the flex quite a bit. Um, again, if you're not seeing it flex like you would like it right off the bat, just go ahead and drive it, drive it, drive it, or do things like this. That's going to loosen up those links and get them where they need to be to allow them to get full flex. So um, that's how you install the Warthog chassis. Pretty straightforward process. So what you need to do this besides the stock kit and the chassis that I sell are three little pillow balls or pivot balls and whatever um, or whatever else you may make them out of. And also you will need just one of the longer screws. So again, if you've got brass diff covers or anything like that, if you've got any other models you can snag these from, just one of the medium length screws to, uh, to four link that front end. Because we took that front Y link and we did change that over to the front link. So that is that guys. Thanks for dropping in. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I will gladly answer them.